ML Sports take its part two of Bucks and Bills. My phone shut off earlier. It's all brought to you by Rosie's Corner, Burton Ace Hardware, and our terrific friends at Camillo's Golf Club. So I left off with, you know, the penalties and the nonsense. Like the Bills, they got to clean that kind of stuff up, man. I mean, they're drive stallers. They're drive continuers for the opposition when you're doing it on defense. And you think about the constant, you know, illegal hands to the face, PIs, uh, false starts, holding penalties. I mean, God, illegal men down the field. It, this has been going on for weeks. Sean McDermott, he, 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 he tells people that he hates mistakes. He's a disciplinarian to a degree. He's very tactical and mechanical and do everything by the book kind of guy. Well, fix this stuff, man. I mean, it's been going on for weeks. Um, so that was another thing that I didn't like. But I want to go back to a few things that I did like, and, 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 and it has to do with the Ken Dorsey stuff and the play calling and getting Josh Allen more mobile and quick and the ball out sooner and rolling him out more and all the rest. Um, I loved the fact that now that you don't have Dawson Knox, and, and look, again, not, Knox, great guy, feel terrible about it, you know him losing his brother last year and all the rest. But they had Knox already. They paid him $14 million a year. Then they bring in a tight end by position title, saying that they're going to use him in non-tight end spots and tight end. Well, now Knox is out. So that 12 personnel that's forced on you because of who you drafted and who you signed long term, i.e. Kincaid, i.e. Dawson Knox, that 12 personnel now is gonzo. 11 personnel, let's go. Dalton Kincaid, get him out in space more. You don't have Knox, so you can use Kincaid more. Because you're using 11 personnel, you can dial up Gabe Davis probably more. You can definitely dial up, hello, Khalil Shakir, who I think has a lot of potential, but again, not getting enough targets because of the other guys. Well, now you fast forward to what happened last night. Shakir, great. Kincaid, great. Davis, great. And of course, Diggs, who was their number one guy. He only had 70 yards and not a lot of targets, not a lot of catches because they kind of took him out of the game a little bit. Then you had Levante David running around for his life. Safeties, cover corners, not knowing who was going to get the ball. That's what I want to see more of. I don't need the two tight end thing. I don't need 12 personnel. I need to see 11 personnel personnel with running backs and multiple wide receivers and quicker guys than a guy like Dawson Knox with better hands, by the way, all over the place so that the defense is going WTF. Holy shit. Where's the ball going? I mean, how much better is that offense to look at than the crap that we've seen as of late now, Dorsey, I am so sick and tired. Here's another thing that I couldn't stand. And I'm going back and forth with likes and dislikes as the timeline goes through my head and the list goes through my head. I am so over third down and a goal from the one yard line or any kind of goal from the one yard line with Josh Allen in shotgun. Can we please stop that shit? You have a 6'5", 250 pound unicorn going shotgun you're basically going four or five yards behind, and so you have to gain plays, right? You have to gain extra yardage in terms of extra plays and, and, and work harder. I am so sick of that. You know, you can tell me all day long about the north-south runner Murray. You can tell me about James Cook. You can tell me about shotgun. Allen has more time to look around. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. Oh, he could hit dig, digs or Dave. No, no, no. He's 6'5", 250. We see the, 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 the brotherly shove with Jalen Hurts, a guy who can squat 700 pounds. I don't think Josh Allen can squat that, but Josh Allen's a lot bigger and he's a lot more this way than Jalen Hurts. Boom, move him forward. Put him in the end zone. It's only one yard. Why are we in a shotgun situation at that particular point? If you look at the team stats, by the way, I love it. The Bills really did dominate, and I think that's something else to look at. Even though they kept the Bucks around, I'm going to close with that in a second. You look at Yards gained per play, absolute advantage. You look at uh, uh, total yards, absolute advantage. One area the Bills really, really, really did strike a gold in last night, and I've been saying this all year, they've got to consistently get better on first and second downs to prevent the third and long. Third and eight, third and 10, third and 12, third and seven, all of those kind of things. And I know that penalties kind of play into a, a, a factor there uh, as well, but they've got to cut down on those third and longs. And I feel like last night they did that. And guess what happened? They were seven of 13 on third down. So that's a big thing. Finally, this Bills season, we've seen them dominate Miami, dominate Vegas, dominate the Commanders. In the other games, they were up double digits on the Jets, no Aaron Rodgers, double digits at halftime. They lose that game to Zach Wilson. We saw them play against the New York football Giants. They should have lost that game. They pulled it out. They were basically asleep at the wheel the entire time. Was it London? Was it not? I don't know. Was it something in between? Whatever. The week before that against the Jaguars, they punted the first four drives. They punted the first six of seven drives. Took them forever to get going. By the time they did, things happen where they don't go in your favor. The defense is exhausted. One thing leads to the next. The injuries and all the rest. I mean, that was the Milano game. 
on and on it goes and they lose, right? Then you have the Patriots game. They start slow on offense. They were horrific on offense. Um, and then yet, as this uh, half, the second half starts, the Bills start to roll. Josh Allen gets them going. Voila, they take the lead. Then what happens? A defense that you think is a little bit more rested, Kurt Plunk. They let Mac Jones, below average quarterback, the New England offensive line, uh, uh, the offensive weapons, all below below average, steamroll right down the field and win. What am I getting at? The Bills lose one of three ways. They either start really, really slow, and by the time they come back, something happens and they lose the game. Um, circumstantial, right? They either do the same exact thing, start slow, come all the way back, but, but then by the time they do it, the defense is so gassed that they just can't control themselves, and maybe you could use that as a New England game. Or the other one is they're just asleep the entire game, and that's the Giants game, but they pull the game out, or they're asleep the entire game, and you know you might have a, a case in point next time where they actually lose that game. So um, I don't know, man. I know that they're not alone in that area. I know that you lose in the NFL in a lot of different ways, but this is just a redonkulous season so far. It's up, it's down, it's east, it's west, it's 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 all over the place. The losses have been crazy. The wins have been crazy. You know, the Dolphins went in as like this, you know, the newest, greatest offense in sliced bread. Nobody moves like them. Nobody does what Mike McDaniel does. Nobody does it. They go out to Buffalo and get their asses kicked by the Bills, and everybody's going, whoop, there's a Super Bowl look. And you fast forward a few weeks, and again, the narrative changes this week is so up and down with emotions it's unbelievable the fan bases ride with it the media rides with it uh, the players and coaches try not to ride with it but you know that they do it's any given Sunday it's that week it's that narrative it's today it's this minute and then it can change like that so uh, we'll see what happens here moving forward but one thing I do know is that I think the overall picture I liked last night for the Buffalo Bills they only won by six Easily could have lost that game because of the Hail Mary, number one, and then number two, just keeping the Bucks in the ball game with Sean McDermott multiple times, not going uh, uh, for, uh, uh, forward on fourth and short well before the last possession. Again, as I alluded to in part one, that's a really tough one because you want to pin them down without the timeouts and all the rest. You give them half the field, and the way the defense can get shredded at any time with McDermott, which is a concern, by the way. Um, I don't know if you want to give them half the field there, but you should have never been in that position in the first place because if you go for multiple fourth downs, even if you go for two or three, Three, I like my chances to get one. Remember, one. All you had to do was get one. You get even three points on the board. Becomes that three-possession game. Mentality changes. Baker's throwing the ball all over the place, which he did last night. I was studied and throw uh, interception after interception. He was He's so far away from Josh Allen, it is even funny. You look at Allen, 300-plus yards uh, throwing, uh, running it all over on the ground like a friggin' antelope with a four. 3-4-4 speed. Um, that's kind of what it looks like to me when he's when he's getting out like that. Uh, size, speed, athleticism, all that shit. And then you know, you look at him throwing the ball all over the place. He's leading the defense. He's tricking the safeties. He's making the corners bite. Uh, the throw to Kincaid, the lead in, the 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 the, the laser to Gabe Davis. Uh, just unbelievable stuff with Josh Allen. And May, Mayfield made none of those plays. He had a couple of big-time scrambles and all the rest. But he's missing guys two, three feet over their heads. Allen misses some throws. He's going to throw an interception, you know, all the time. We know that. That's who Allen is. But when you look at Allen and you look at Mayfield and you look at the stud that Allen is compared to Mayfield, the number one pick who just isn't that guy it's not even close these quarterbacks are not even close and that's why the elite quarterback continues to keep you in it and that's why Josh Allen at this juncture is is a Buffalo Bill with a five and three record and a team that still has a ton of potential to win the division and maybe be a, a, a problem for other teams in the playoffs so now what the what do the Bills do it's pretty pretty straightforward right They've got almost a mini buy here at this point because you play at home last night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and then all of Monday as well into the Monday nighter against Cincinnati. So you pretty much got a week and a half off. This is rest, relaxation, cool tanks, hot uh, tubs. Uh, uh, take a day or two off. McDermott better give him some time off. These guys need to relax. They need to kind of reset, refocus, uh, get every single thing out of their system at this point, going all the way back to the London game, maybe even going back to week one against the Jets. Who knows? But, you know, they shouldn't be thinking about all that stuff. Flush it all out. We're here at five and three. We still have everything in front of us. That's exactly what Josh Allen said. And now you move into a game with Cincy where if you beat the Bengals <clears throat> on the road, you're back into the conversation. You and and the Chiefs, you and the Chiefs, and maybe a little bit of Baltimore Ravens as well, but you and the Chiefs, you and the Chiefs. That's where we're at. Still, AFC supremacy is available. Chiefs are one right now. Ravens are two. 
Are the Bills three? Maybe, maybe not. But they have an opportunity to get up into the top two yet again if they win against Cincinnati. Mike Lindsley with you here. It's an ML Sports Take brought to you by our great friends at the Allen Angus Pub. Stop by before and after all the big events in central New York. The Allen Angus Pub, home of the best darn Angus Burger in town. And a tip of the cap thank you as well to Bonnet Sales and Service, CH Insurance, Bowers & Company, CPAs, and Stanley Law Offices. Together, they'll work to get you the maximum reward. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.